Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons. And today, we're going to talk about the F5 Automation Tool Chain, which is a set of automation tools that makes it faster and easier to deploy and configure your F5 application services via a simple yet powerful declarative interface, or actually a set of interfaces. And this tool chain enables developers to programmatically extend F5 application services to integrate with CI/CD tool chains, orchestration systems, and any third-party ecosystems. So before we move on to the components of the tool chain, I want to talk about declarative interface versus the imperative, um, or declarative uh, versus imperative interfaces. And on F5 technologies, these are both accomplished via REST. And when you think about imperative, you think, here's the change I want made, and here's how I do it. So if you're a Star Trek fan, think Scotty and his expendable crewman down in the engineering pit. I've give, I'm giving it all I've got, Captain. And so, you know, they're the ones carrying out all of the little steps to be able to give the captain more power, right? And on the declarative side, that's more, you know, Captain Kirk or Captain Picard, and they're saying, hey, make it so. They're not telling them how to make it so. They're just saying, here's what I want done, do it. And so um, if you look at it from the standpoint of you have a controller and you have API endpoints, and then you have an end state. With imperative, you have maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different things that need to happen. So if you're establishing a virtual server, you need to define a pool with pool members, and that's one call. And then you need to establish some profiles. And if you're only going to use uh, standard profiles, well, then you don't really need to do anything here. But if you're going to customize anything, so uh, like the HTTP or TCP profiles, or you know, you're know uh, you going to throw a, um, uh, well, I don't know. Let's just stick with HTTP and TCP. And, but you're going to put custom profiles, so you need to create those. And then maybe you have a snap pool that you need to find in order to build on this. And, and then maybe you need some I rules, and so you need to deploy those. Maybe you have a, a local traffic policy as well that you have to establish there. And you know we, we may not make it to seven here. But uh, say uh, at this point, you need to establish your uh, virtual server. And so all of these iterative steps you have to do, and each one of these is one or more API calls in order to, um, to affect that. And, and so with that comes, you know, multiple calls to the API, um, often uh, multiple dependencies. Dependency. Oh, I'm terrible. Okay. And versus when you go to a, a declarative model, then all of this work is done for you. Somebody has to do the imperative work, right? And so what the declarative model gives you is abstraction. You give it the data in a JSON blob and you send one call, uh, one call to the API. And you send all the JSON, blob, JSON data that describes all of these things, and then the system builds it for you. So the system knowledge is abstracted, and it's a single API call where dependencies are all handled for you. And so the, the downside of a declarative interface, right, is that it is abstracted. So if you don't already know the system, there's magic and, and uh, you know, the wizard uh, behind the curtain. You don't really know what's going on. And so as a technologist, you know, I'm, I'm fine uh, having the declarative interface if I already understand all the imperative steps. And so 
you know, you know, your mileage may vary on that, but that's that's kind of where I land on that. And now that we've talked about declarative versus imperative, let's talk about the actual services within the tool chain. And if I start with your bootstrapping in whatever environment that you're in, you have uh, you have to have a system with which to have your declarative interfaces um, uh, available, right? So, you know, you may build a virtual uh, edition and you deploy it to whatever cloud. And we have, we have templates that allow you to build those instances, whether it's Azure or AWS, um, Google Cloud. We have templates to, to build the VE interface. And then you have onboarding. Onboarding. Okay, and this is where the first component which we call declarative onboarding, DO. And this is where you can have a, a declarative um, call with your JSON blob that will build all of the system-specific information like NTP and DNS, uh, IPs, um, uh, for the self-IPs, your VLANs, um, you know, all that system-level information. And so you apply your sysinfo down to that virtual edition, all right? And then we come over here and we have our application services. And, uh, and that's what we call AS3. And within AS3, this is where your applications are really defined, whether it's local uh, load balancing, global load balancing, policies, um, I rules, all of those things are defined here. And so you can apply your app services down to the virtual edition that has already been built with DO. And then after your application services are deployed, this is where your telemetry comes into play. And our declarative interface for that we call uh, telemetry streaming. And this is, you know, you're monitoring your telemetry, all the system data that is, that is uh, being uh, collected locally on your system. This is where you want to send it up. So whether, you know, you have your application services running on your virtual edition, you have your app services in here, and say you deployed F5 Beacon out here, and you're collecting um, all of your telemetry data, whether it's big IP, whether it's GTM, um, whether it's Nginx and, and all that. But for big IP, you have telemetry streaming, and we're gonna send that data um, that we're uh, collecting here out to FI Beacon. And so that's where your telemetry streaming comes into play. And so all of these different um, declarative interfaces, right? It's, it's deployed to the system, and, and then the system exists, the configuration for that particular declaration um, exists until you change that declaration and resend it, right? You don't wanna be um, changing any of the nerd knobs within those configurations on the device uh, because then that source of truth really um, gets muddled and you don't want that. And so you have here at the side, you have your uh, change management. And this is where you bring in your uh, CI, CD tool chains, and then you can come back and kind of change any of this along the way um, as necessary. And so in a nutshell, that is what um, the automation tool chain does for you. And if you have any questions, um, hit me up in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click subscribe, and I'll have some links down in the uh, description uh, for you to check out for each one of these individual um, interfaces.